people wearing a bachelor cap with a fluttering face as they walk. These are the graduates of the Zion Christian Mission Center under Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Those who have completed the entire Bible curriculum at Mission Center and passed the graduation exam and have now entered Shincheonji Church of Jesus. This is the world's largest seminary completion ceremony hosted by a single denomination. This day, November 10, 2019, a total of 103,764 students graduated. Shincheonji, the Church of Jesus, has experienced an explosive growth of 4,500 times in 35 years since its foundation. When many are disappointed in the world of faith and leave churches, why are so many people streaming to Shincheonji, the Church of Jesus? Shincheonji, Church of Jesus, founded in 1984 in Kwachan, South Korea, through Chairman Man Hee Lee, and the 12 tribes has its headquarters based in the major cities of Korea. The official name is Shincheonji, Church of Jesus, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. Here, Shincheonji is an abbreviation of New Heaven and New Earth, which means that a new era has come to the world of faith. Church of Jesus means that the owner of the church is Jesus. The Tabernacle of Testimony is the name recorded in Revelation 15, which means to see, hear, and testify regarding the reality of New Testament prophecies. Like the church name, the organizational structure of Shincheonji, the Church of Jesus, is based on the Bible. With chairman being the center pillar, there are 24 departments in charge of administration and seven education centers like Seven Eyes. In addition, there are 12 tribe leaders that inherited the names of Jesus' 12 disciples, who became the cornerstones of heaven. This is a model of the spiritual realm shown in Revelation chapter 4. Just as Moses built the tabernacle according to what God had shown him 3,500 years ago, and as Jesus has done all the work according to what God had shown him at the first coming. The kingdom of God, promised in the Bible, is made up of 12 tribes in each era. Today, Shinjinji as well, is the only place in the world that has been created with the 12 tribes. This is evidence that God established Shinjinji, Church of Jesus, and the congregation members of Shinjinji, belonging to the 12 tribes, are God's precious children. Those who have learned the 66 books of the Bible through the promised pastor and perceive the true will of God. Shinchanji Church of Jesus is strictly based on the words of the Bible thoroughly from name to organization. In Revelation 22 verse 16, Jesus promised to send a messenger for the churches to speak his words at the second coming. Chairman Man Hee Lee was sent according to this promise and he is telling believers around the world about the fulfillment of Jesus' second coming that he saw and heard and the true meaning of the 66 books in the Bible. According to the teachings of Jesus, who said to freely give the water of life, Chairman Lee is running the Zion Christian Mission Center around the world free of charge. In the new contactless society, the online mission center was opened recently, opening its door wide open for anyone who wants to listen to the word of God taught by Shincheonji. Believers who have heard clear biblical evidence that cannot be heard anywhere else and confirmed the reality of the New Testament prophecy that emerged rush to Shincheonji, the Church of Jesus. The culture of the life of faith in the congregation members of Shincheonji, who are nurtured by the absoluteness of God's word, is clearly revealed through the attendance rate. The congregation members of Shincheonji, Church of Jesus, are all keeping service on Wednesdays and Sundays. We have received the highest truth in the 6,000 years of the Bible. And God, Jesus, and the angels are with us. This is what Shinjinji, Church of Jesus, is proud of. You can't be lazy in learning and mastering the 66 books of the Bible. The congregation members of Shinjinji are working on their ability to preach the word of the Bible as children of God. A true proving ground to check your skills. The New Covenant Fulfillment Exam is administered in each tribe. All members of Shincheonji, from students to seniors, take online exams every month to check on their faith. A church is a place where people gather to teach the word. 
Shincheonji Church of Jesus is the true church where the words of God and Jesus flow out. The prophecy of the New Testament ends with the creation of a world of peace in which God dwells upon. Shincheonji Church of Jesus brings a beautiful world on this earth where God can come down upon. Put it up. Isn't it right for us to give the world back to God? Because the world that has been so gracious to many was originally from God. Therefore, God can come down and reign over, right? That's the work that we are fulfilling today. Shincheonji Church of Jesus first visited places in need of help throughout the country and offered a warm hand. Each organization and association recognizes its contributions and awarded an appreciation plaque to the volunteers of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, which has been the most consistent and dedicated compared to any other organization in the world. Furthermore, Mr. Lee is leading a global peace movement as the representative of the peace organization, HWPL. It follows the path of Jesus who proclaimed peace in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago and fulfills God's word that promised the world of peace. Even now, those who seek the truth are gathered here, where the true meaning of the Bible is. A believer that shines the light to the world based on the correct biblical knowledge and faith, you can be the main character too. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to New Heaven, New Earth's press conference. Thank you for joining us today. Just a few reminders to set your virtual environment ready before we start. This press conference will be recorded and will be used as a reference for the press release. Please keep your video camera on at all times during the press conference. During the question and answer segment, we will be calling the media organizations who submitted their question and your video will be put on spotlight beside Chairman Lee so that it will appear on the main screen. Participants will be on mute during the press conference to minimize interruptions. Please place your camera focused on you with a front view. Please refrain from using the raise hand option during the program. Please avoid eating or doing any other tasks during the press conference that might distract other participants. You can prepare some water beside you before we start, so that when you get thirsty, you won't have to leave your seat. You can excuse yourself for a quick break or an urgent call, but please do not turn off the camera and return as soon as possible. We will be joined by none other than Chairman Lee himself, who will be answering your questions later, so during the press conference, the questions will be translated for him into Korean by an interpreter. He will answer in Korean, which will be simultaneously translated into English by our interpreter. To hear the English translation, please make sure to click Interpretation, which is the globe icon at the bottom part of your Zoom screen, and choose English. If you ever come up with questions or any concerns during the press conference, kindly message Admin1 or Admin2. Please stand by as we will begin shortly. Thank you. We would like to ask for your understanding. This event is a press conference hosted by Shinchanji Church of Jesus. Originally, we were planning to have a two-part press conference, but due to high number of questions, we will only be having a question and answer session with the chairman. We ask for your kind understanding in regards to the change of program. People wearing a bachelor cap with a fluttering face as they walk. These are the graduates of the Zion Christian Mission Center under Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Those who have completed the entire Bible curriculum at Mission Center and passed the graduation exam and have now entered Shincheonji Church of Jesus. This is the world's largest seminary completion ceremony hosted by a single denomination. This day, November 10, 2019, 
a total of 103,764 students graduated. Shinchenji, the Church of Jesus, has experienced an explosive growth of 4,500 times in 35 years since its foundation. When many are disappointed in the world of faith and leave churches, why are so many people streaming to Shinchenji, the Church of Jesus? Shinchenji, Church of Jesus, founded in 1984 in Kwachan, South Korea, through Chairman Man Hee Lee, and the 12 tribes has its headquarters based in the major cities of Korea. The official name is Shincheonji Church of Jesus, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. Here, Shincheonji is an abbreviation of New Heaven and New Earth, which means that a new era has come to the world of faith. Church of Jesus means that the owner of the church is Jesus. The Tabernacle of Testimony is the name recorded in Revelation 15, which means to see, hear, and testify regarding the reality of New Testament prophecies. Like the church name, the organizational structure of Shincheonji, the Church of Jesus, is based on the Bible. With chairman being the center pillar, there are 24 departments in charge of administration and seven education centers like Seven Eyes. In addition, there are 12 tribe leaders that inherited the names of Jesus' 12 disciples, who became the cornerstones of heaven. This is a model of the spiritual realm shown in Revelation chapter 4. Just as Moses built the tabernacle according to what God had shown him 3,500 years ago, and as Jesus has done all the work according to what God had shown him at the first coming. The kingdom of God, promised in the Bible, is made up of 12 tribes in each era. Today, Shinjinji as well, is the only place in the world that has been created with the 12 tribes. This is evidence that God established Shinjinji, Church of Jesus, and the congregation members of Shinjinji, belonging to the 12 tribes, are God's precious children. Those who have learned the 66 books of the Bible through the promised pastor and perceive the true will of God. Shinchenji Church of Jesus is strictly based on the words of the Bible thoroughly from name to organization. In Revelation 22 verse 16, Jesus promised to send a messenger for the churches to speak his words at the second coming. Chairman Man Hee Lee was sent according to this promise, and he is telling believers around the world about the fulfillment of Jesus' second coming that he saw and heard, and the true meaning of the 66 books in the Bible. According to the teachings of Jesus, who said to freely give the water of life, Chairman Lee is running the Zion Christian Mission Center around the world free of charge. In the new contactless society, the online mission center was opened recently, opening its door wide open for anyone who wants to listen to the word of God taught by Shinchenji. Believers who have heard clear biblical evidence that cannot be heard anywhere else and confirmed the reality of the New Testament prophecy that emerged rush to Shinchenji, the Church of Jesus. The culture of the life of faith in the congregation members of Shinchenji, who are nurtured by the absoluteness of God's word, is clearly revealed through the attendance rate. The congregation members of Shincheonji, Church of Jesus, are all keeping service on Wednesdays and Sundays. We have received the highest truth in the 6,000 years of the Bible. And God, Jesus, and the angels are with us. This is what Shincheonji, Church of Jesus, is proud of. You can't be lazy in learning and mastering the 66 books of the Bible. The congregation members of Shincheonji are working on their ability to preach the word of the Bible as children of God. A true proving ground to check your skills. The New Covenant Fulfillment Exam is administered in each tribe. All members of Shincheonji, from students to seniors, take online exams every month to check on their faith. A church is a place where people gather to teach the word. Shincheonji Church of Jesus is the true church where the words of God and Jesus flow out. The prophecy of the New Testament ends with the creation of a world of peace in which God dwells upon. Shincheonji Church of Jesus brings a beautiful world on this earth where God can come down upon. Isn't it right for us to give the world back to God? Because the world that has been so gracious to many 
was originally from God. Therefore, God can come down and reign over, right? That's the work that we are fulfilling today. Shinchanji Church of Jesus first visited places in need of help throughout the country and offered a warm hand. Each organization and association recognizes its contributions and awarded an appreciation plaque to the volunteers of Shinchanji Church of Jesus, which has been the most consistent and dedicated compared to any other organization in the world. Furthermore, Mr. Lee is leading a global peace movement as the representative of the peace organization, HWPL. It follows the path of Jesus who proclaimed peace in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago and fulfills God's word that promised the world of peace. Even now, those who seek the truth are gathered here where the true meaning of the Bible is. A believer that shines the light to the world based on the correct biblical knowledge and faith, you can be the main character too. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to New Heaven, New Earth's press conference. Thank you for joining us today. Just a few reminders to set your virtual environment ready before we start. This press conference will be recorded and will be used as a reference for the press release. Please keep your video camera on at all times during the press conference. During the question and answer segment, we will be calling the media organizations who submitted their question and your video will be put on spotlight beside Chairman Lee so that it will appear on the main screen. Participants will be on mute during the press conference to minimize interruptions. Please place your camera focused on you with a front view. Please refrain from using the raise hand option during the program. Please avoid eating or doing any other tasks during the press conference that might distract other participants. You can prepare some water beside you before we start, so that when you get thirsty, you won't have to leave your seat. You can excuse yourself for a quick break or an urgent call, but please do not turn off the camera and return as soon as possible. We will be joined by none other than Chairman Lee himself, who will be answering your questions later, so during the press conference, the questions will be translated for him into Korean by an interpreter. He will answer in Korean, which will be simultaneously translated into English by our interpreter. To hear the English translation, please make sure to click Interpretation, which is the globe icon at the bottom part of your Zoom screen, and choose English. If you ever come up with questions or any concerns during the press conference, kindly message Admin1 or Admin2. Please stand by as we will begin shortly. Thank you.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the African Press Conference of Shinchanji Church, testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings will begin shortly. Please turn on your camera and pay attention to the screen. Once again, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the African Press Conference of Shinchanji Church, testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings will begin shortly. Please turn on your camera and pay attention to the screen.
Welcome everyone. My name is Mukalasi Elvin, and I'll be your host of today's press conference, the African Press Conference of Shinchanji Church, testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. Before we begin the event, I'd like to inform you that this press conference was recorded in compliance with the COVID-19 quarantine guidelines. This press conference is held with the 55 nations in Africa. And I would like to inform you that reporters and pastors from participating countries are joining us. I'd also like to use this opportunity to thank all the participants. Now, allow me to introduce our host, Shinchanji Church of Jesus, the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony. Shinchanji Church of Jesus, the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony, was established on March 14, 1984. Its headquarter is in South Africa, and it is not affiliated with any denomination. According to the will of God inside the Holy Bible, it testifies revelation and what has been seen without any cost. According to the Holy Bible, it consists of 12 tribes, and currently it is proclaiming the promised pastor of God, the promised kingdom, and the promised theology. Through this press conference, Shinchanji seeks to testify the true meaning of the New Testament Bible and misunderstandings about the end of mankind and the Holy Bible have been increasing as the world is currently facing the COVID-19 pandemic. And a correct testimony about religion has been needed. Recent question in regards to COVID-19 representing the end of the world has been a strong issue. In the midst of this, Shinchanji Church Testify the entire chapters of Revelation and the meaning of its prophecy and the physical fulfillment last October with the title, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. This seminar was broadcasted live in 24 different languages. And as a result, 16,000 posters around the world participated in the seminar. And currently, there are around 8 million views from over 136 nations. Many pastors say that the contents of the seminar are excellent and showed interest in wanting to teach this to their congregation. Shinchanji Church of Jesus has been creating MOUs with over 1,200 pastors from 57 nations and is helping so that each church can use the Shinchanji word to educate. Currently, there are 235 MOUs that are created with theology schools and pastors in 16 nations of Africa in regards to partnership in Bible education. And since the 3rd of January, 2022, during three months, the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meaning seminar with 25 lessons is being broadcasted through Shinchanji YouTube channel. And now we will conclude the introduction and officially begin the conference. In this press conference, we will invite Chairman Manhili of Shinchanji, Church of Jesus, and answer your questions with sincerity. Before we begin the press conference, allow me to introduce the chairman, Shinchanji Church of Jesus, the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony. Manhi Li, the chairman of Shinchanji Church of Jesus, the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony, is working for world peace as a messenger of peace following the command of heaven, and also as a person of religion, he is testifying the fulfilled realities of the book of Revelation. The reality of the promised pastor of the Old Testament is Jesus, and as the Son of God, he saw what God was doing and carried out according to what he saw. 
Who is the promised pastor of the New Testament promised by Jesus, and what work does he do? This promised pastor is not Jesus. He is the promised pastor sent by Jesus. The promised pastor of the New Testament is the messenger sent to the churches to testify all of the fulfillment which he saw and heard through Jesus. Chairman Man Hee Lee has harvested, sealed, and created the 12 tribes of Shincheonji, New Heaven and New Earth, Church of Jesus, the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony. This was fulfilled as the promise in the New Testament revelation. And following Jesus, he began the work of peace. Transcending borders, races, and religion, he toured many countries around the world on 31 times, meeting with former and incumbent presidents of each country and signing a peace agreement. On January 24, 2014, he visited Mindanao, Philippines, which was suffering from bloody conflict and led a private-level peace agreement which contributed greatly to spreading a culture of peace throughout the Philippines. Chairman Manhili held the World Peace Conference Summit in September 2014. He promised to enact an international law to end war with former and incumbent presidents and politicians. According to that promise, the 10 articles and the 38 clauses of the Declaration of World Peace and the cessation of war was proclaimed in March 14, 2016. And he has been working to legalize this as an official law. The religious leads have been comparing their doctrines and promised to become one as religion through dialogue. This promise was put to practice to the World Alliance of Religion Office. And Chairman Man Hee Lee has been hosting the commemoration of World Peace Summit every September to keep the promise of fulfilling peace. In every era, God promised and fulfilled. The things that God promised to Abraham, the things promised to the Old Testament prophets, were fulfilled at the time of Jesus' first coming. All the things Jesus promised in the New Testament are all fulfilled by Jesus at the time of the, His second coming. Also, He showed the things that has fulfilled to the promised pastor and makes him testify. Therefore, only the promised pastor is able to testify the realities of the prophecies of the New Testament. God wants us to believe in this reality. We ask all to listen to the testimony of the chairman, Shin Chan Ji, Church of Jesus, the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony, Man Hee Lee, the realities of revelation he saw and heard, and confirm it with the Bible. We would like to have a question and answer session with Chairman Man Hee Lee, who is the chairman of Shinchanji. Chairman Man Hee Lee is currently working for achieving global peace with a practical approach and is working for the peace in Africa. And by proclaiming the revealed one, he is working to guide all people towards salvation. Chairman Lee, we would like to invite you to say a word to all the participants. Now, let us welcome Chairman Manhili of Shinchanji Church of Jesus, Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony, with a big round of applause. Very happy to see you, to meet you. Amongst the many countries in the world, in particular, I've really loved Africa and I've also been to Africa as well, visited Africa. Everyone, I'm sure you have many things that you are curious about. When I look at the world, God's word regarding the Bible, I didn't talk about it. The reason why I didn't speak about it was because even, even if you heard it, you wouldn't understand it. And in order to achieve peace, I went around the world. Today, inside the Bible, 
I'm sure you have many questions regarding it. And regarding that, if you ask questions, what I have seen and heard and what I know, I will give it to you as an answer. And also, as we qu give questions and answers, the 12 tribes of Shinchenji as well, towards the whole world, regarding all the chapters of Revelation, the word regarding it, as well as all the people, in order to understand the meaning of the Bible, we are explaining the parables in the figurative language and the content of the introductory level. And afterwards, regarding the, in, the entire content of the Bible, we'll be looking at it chapter by chapter and the head instructors of the churches will be giving the lectures. We are within God and within Jesus, we are one. We are like brothers. Therefore, everyone, if you speak, and uh, if, if, there's, if there's any questions that you have, you can record the content of the lectures and listen to it again. Any question you have, please ask it so that um, to all the Christians of the world, uh, it will be a time of grace. Thank you very much. Thank you. To extend my gratitude, once again, to Chairman Manhili to shine this place for attending the press conference today. We would like to thank all press associates who have sent their questions beforehand. This press conference was pre-recorded due to limited time and to minimize network failure in Africa. We would like to ask for your kind understanding as we were not able to answer all questions due to time. The answers, however, to these questions will be sent by email. Well, we will now begin with our first question. All right, uh, good morning. The question goes like this. In uh, this era when religion uh, believers are decreasing, Shin Chong Chi uh, was able to produce 140,000 graduates after 2019. What is the reason why uh, people are gathering to Shin Chong Chi? People are always looking for food to eat. As believers, what is it the spiritual food for us? What is the spiritual food for us? It is actually God's word. The reason is, if you look at John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And through this word, all things were created. Not just that, this word in the beginning has life and light. Therefore, within this word has life and power that gives life to people. Therefore, wherever the word is, the believers, all the more the Christians. In the Christian scripture, wherever the word is, they're going to look for it. That's why those who are thirsty for God's word, wherever the word of truth is, they're going to look for it and listen to it. And once they listen, if it's good, they're going to go again and listen again. That's why the reason why people come is because we have the word of truth. That's what I think. You too, everything that is heard, please record it, and the true word of God. If there's anything that you want to know about, I would uh, more than willingly uh, tell you what I saw and heard. Thank you. We have heard Chairman's answer well. Thank you. Next question. I'm, I'm very grateful uh, to have also had a chance to participate uh, in, in this session and be able to ask uh, just about any question that I would uh, feel that uh, it, it's an agent one that needs to be addressed uh, uh, scripturally. Yeah. 
okay, as I was listening to the Shin Jewonchi uh, Revelation Seminar online, I came to understand that you say the prophecy of Revelation was being fulfilled in the Republic of Korea. Uh, among all the countries in the world, why do you say it is fulfilled in Korea? Yes, I'd like to speak. What I'm trying to say right now, uh, thank you for speaking and uh, asking a difficult question. First of all, I'd like to uh, give you, ask you a question. Jesus, why did Jesus appear of all the places in Israel? Why did he speak uh, regarding Israel? God had a purpose behind that. However, my answer is a little bit different. First, of course, it's God's will, and it's also the will of Jesus, but why is it fulfilled in Korea? Regarding this content, in Matthew 24, I'm sure you know that content. In Matthew 24, at the time of the first coming, what happened to the Israelites at the time of the first coming, uh, it records it, but Matthew 24 is actually about the signs of the second coming that have been recorded in advance. Regarding this content, if you look at the latter part of the chapter, there's a passage that says, this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed to the ends of the earth as a testimony. And then the end will come. That's what it says there. Everyone, in Asia, the ends of the earth, where is the ends of the earth in terms of Asia? Of course, Japan and Korea is referred to as the East. If you think about it in terms of the continent, uh, Japan is like an island nation, but Korea would be the ends of the earth. And there, so if you look at it in terms of the map, you can see that. And it's written, recorded in Isaiah as well. And also in the prophecy of Jesus, it talks about the ends of the earth. He also mentioned that as well. That's why this kind of similar content also appears in Revelation chapter 7. It says that the work of sealing takes place from the east, from the place where the sun rises. When we say sealing, it means that we receive God's word in our minds, in our hearts. This work takes place from the place where the sun rises. Therefore, Jesus... Regarding all these things, he knows. However, one thing, we as believers who carry out a life of faith within God, we have to think about one thing. In this world, it's not just people that exist. You have spirits that exist. Amongst the spirits, there are two kinds of spirits. One is the spirit of God, and the other is the enemy, the one that opposes the devil. God's secrets should not be made known to the devil. Isn't that right? Everyone, in the book of Revelation, it's a very small book. You know how many mysteries are inside that book? There's three major secrets, major mysteries in the book of Revelation. These three kinds of mysteries, and of all the people in the world, who did God make it known to? You should know it's only to one person. In all the events of Revelation, that mystery is made known to one person. That's what's made known in the scriptures. Even at the time of the first coming, God's mysteries were made known to Jesus, just like that. That's why in this manner, whether it be the spirits of heaven or the family members of God here on earth, that secret can't just be given to anybody. That's why. In the Bible, it says he spoke in parables, in figurative language, in Matthew 13. That's what's recorded, right? Therefore, regarding the secrets of God, it cannot just be handed out to anybody. But when we see things in general, regarding the content of the Bible, 
we carry out a life of faith accordingly. So God carries out his work in Korea, and he began the work in Korea. He already, if he said it clearly, the devil will try to oppose that work. But God already made it known. This is my response to that question. Yes, thank you, Chairman, for the insightful answer. Bonjour à tous. Je suis très ému de suivre ces séminaires sur le livre de l'Apocalypse. Je remercie à cet effet le président Li de l'Église Nouveau Ciel et Nouvelle Terre, Xin Chongji, pour l'invitation. Vous nous avez donné l'opportunité de suivre ce séminaire de révélation en ligne sur YouTube partout dans le monde entier gratuitement. Alors, quelle a été votre motivation à organiser ce séminaire et pourquoi vous avez porté votre choix sur les livres de l'Apocalypse parmi tant d'autres contenus bibliques Je vous remercie. Ne. Saranada. Every person, depending on that person's position, he or she speaks accordingly. Everyone, when I went to Africa, I saw many things and heard many things. And Africans, in terms of their life of faith, they have, many people are really interested and passionate about their lives of faith. First, the first nation that I went to was Ethiopia. There, the president was six years older than me. And so I also, I referred to him as older brother. And I said, I'm a younger brother. And in doing the work of peace, uh, we uh, signed a peace treaty. In the second place that I went to was South Africa. I went to South Africa. And regarding South Africa, All the, there was a place where all the leaders of Africa would gather. Ethiopia also had all the place where the presidents gather. And the person there was younger than me. But the reason why I did that was to actually achieve the work of peace. So, uh, we had an agreement, signed an agreement, and we asked them to be uh, part of the advisory council for HWPL. And when I went to South Africa, they also had a town referred to as Tree of Life. There was also a town referred to as Tree of Life. And we, I, we stayed there, and the people there had tremendous lives of faith there. They were really great in terms of their life of faith. First of all, I need to answer the question. Yeah. Regarding the question, why is it the book of Revelation in particular through the tribe leaders to the whole world did we proclaim it? That's the question, right? The reason is if you're a Christian, everybody has this book of Revelation. But regarding the content of Revelation, there is very peculiar mystery. It's the mysteries of the, of the kingdom of heaven, and it's actually a mystery that will be fulfilled at the end of the world. It's not something that the enemy should know. So it was spoken in figurative language and parables. It was actually a mystery. If you look at Revelation chapter 1, it talks about the mystery of the seven messengers. And in Revelation 10, it talks about another mystery. There's also a mystery regarding the seventh trumpet. 
And if you go to Revelation 17, it talks about the mystery regarding the enemy. And when you see that, the things regarding God is a mystery. The things regarding the enemy is also a mystery. The mystery regarding the trumpet is also a mystery. Why is this word of mystery, the book of Revelation, made known throughout the whole world? This Bible, there are many people in this world, but when it's fulfilled, there, it is only shown to one person, and it's only made known to one person. And then that person, through that person, this has to be made, made known to all the churches. And it says you cannot add to it or subtract from it. Where does it say that? In Revelation 22, verse 8, from chapter 1 to chapter 22, what was being fulfilled, the one that fulfills it is Jesus. The one who takes that book is also Jesus. And there is one person who's next to him who saw and heard all those things. That person, the one who saw this, this, is John, I, John. That's what it says, right? One person. He saw and heard all of it. And after that, if you look at Revelation 22, 16, what does it say? Everything that he saw and heard, he makes it known to the churches. And it says, testify about it. The churches don't just exist in Korea, right? It exists all over the world. It exists all over the world of Christianity. How can it be proclaimed to all the churches? Would you be able to go by yourself to all the churches in the world and testify? Even if they received you, even if they received you, they're not going to be able to understand. We have to testify what has been seen. When God fulfills his work, there's only one person who saw it. And the one that fulfills it is Jesus. But you have to testify. How do you? How are you going to proclaim about it? So, according to the promise of the Bible, the twelve tribes in their hearts, the word is sealed, and the twelve tribes, the entire event chapters of Revelation is made known throughout the world to whole to the whole world. When you listen to it, the twelve tribe leader. You think that they just like wrote down notes and then testify, they opened the Bible and testified? No, right? These people, they're sealed. When you say you're sealed, that new covenant, this book of Revelation, was all recorded in their hearts. If you look at Hebrews 8, it talks about that, right? To record God's laws in their hearts. So these people, they're like walking Bibles just like Jesus and like God. And so they're sealed in their hearts. The word that's recorded in their hearts from Revelation 1 to chapter 22, they didn't look at the Bible and they were able to speak all about it. And that's why they testified about it. You have the same book, but you didn't know the meaning of this word and you didn't know the actual entities that appeared according to the prophecies. But we may know how the prophecies of Revelation have been fulfilled. So you should listen again to the recordings of those lectures. Thank you. We're able to see Chairman's purpose. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to ask questions. Um, so my first question would be, I believe that there is another seminar that continues on from the Revelation seminar that was last year with explanations of the parables in the Bible. What is the intention of opening this seminar? That's a really good question. In Psalm chapter 78, I'm sure you've seen it. Psalm chapter 78. God, what does he say? Regarding the things of the old, Things of the past, I will make it known in parables and make it known to the future generations. So what does Jesus do when he came at the time of the first coming? 
says he did not say anything without speaking in parables. That's how many times he spoke in parables. And even in the book of Revelation, everything is spoken in parables and figurative language. He didn't talk about it in terms of actual entities when he recorded it, but he recorded it in parable. And Jesus, in John 16, 25, he says, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but I will tell you plainly about my father. That's what he promised in John 16, 25. The reason why he spoke in figurative language is so that the enemy wouldn't understand. That's why he spoke in figurative language. And this figurative language, when the time comes, he says, I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly. I'm sure you've read it, so you already know. That's why if he spoke in figurative language. And that's why when you look at the book of Revelation, you're not going to know what it means. I'd like to point out one thing. In Revelation 13, you have a beast with seven heads and ten horns coming out of the sea. That form, it looks like a leopard, it looks like a bear, it looks like a lion. It has ten horns. And there's seven heads. Have you seen a beast like that? This is spoken in figurative language. When the actual entities appear, it's a different form. There's another one. In Revelation chapter 9, there, you've got horses that appear. These horses, there's a lot of them. And the head of the horse is on the tail of the horse. And from his mouth come fire, smoke, and sulfur, and it kills a third of mankind. Have you ever heard, seen that kind of passage? It's spoken in figurative language. Whether it be Revelation 13 or Revelation 9, the fulfilled reality, when it appears, it's different from this content. However, it's not that the content is wrong. The words are correct, but it's recorded figuratively. So if you understand it literally, it's hard to understand. That's why when you read the Bible, you have to understand the figurative language. And in order to understand it, to make known the figurative language, to explain the figurative language. That's when you could read the Bible and understand and believe in it, right? Because I thought that even it's, if it's difficult to the whole world, the introductory level, the explanation of the parables is done in seminars. And there are some people who uh, know and there are some people who don't know that in order to help people understand the figurative language and the parables, we have lesson one to lesson 24 of the introductory level. Do you understand? Well, I am excited to see what will happen in the future. Thank you. Oh, nice to meet you. Uh, first, uh, thank you for inviting me in this press conference in Africa. I'm honored to be able to attend this press conference and ask a question in person. Uh, my question is, after the Sinjunji Revelation Seminar, I heard that many pastors and believers responded enthusiastically to the lectures on the testimony uh, on the parables of the secrets of heavens and their true meanings. And the numbers of churches signing a memorandum of understanding with Sinjunji is also increasing. Uh, do you have a message uh, you would like to convey to pastors and believers who have not yet heard this word? Thank you. Of course, there are people who haven't heard this word yet, and there are people who read the Bible and understand it, and then there are also those who read the Bible but can't understand the meaning well as well. Whether it be the, the journalists or the pastors, your task is important and it's very large. And if you carry out your task, you will be blessed. And if you can't carry out the task, they won't be able to receive the blessing. 
But if people were not able to participate and listen to the explanation through the people who have uh, heard the explanation and listen to the recordings. And if there's something that they should understand, I hope that people do understand. And there are still things that you probably don't know yet. I went around the world 31 times. It's easy to say 31 times, but it is such hard work. I'm sure you could understand, uh, imagine. And whether it be the former or the current president and chief justices in each nation and parliament members, as well as university chancellors, why did I meet them? It was for the international law. It is only when they okay to that, that we can actually create an international law. As I went around many nations, and it's only when they could they okay it and support that international law, that's only that only when we get that support, we could enact that law. So I did a very arduous work. I'm sure you could understand that. So in every nation, what do we do? We establish peace monuments. In Africa, there are a few as well. Do you know? We went to the islands of Mindanao and the Philippines. There was religious conflict between two religious groups. More than 120,000 people died because of that religious conflict. They have a huge population. But why did they fight for more than 40 years? There was a war between Catholicism and Islam. And Catholicism has their Pope too. Do you think that he was just watching people dying? Nobody was resolving that problem. There was no law or army that could resolve that religious conflict. However, in the midst of that warfare, I went and within an hour to two hours, it was resolved and we established several peace monuments and we ended that conflict and they promised to do the work of peace together. And January 24th, a few days ago, the January 24th as well, many people gathered and held an event. And that day was uh, set as the HWPL day. And it was also, uh, the president also agreed to make it like a national holiday, this kind of peace. In order to achieve peace, all of us need to become messengers of peace, right? I'm sure there's nobody who's going to go against that work of peace. The whole world is, there's so many nations that are suffering. I also participated in the civil war and I fought in the front lines and I saw atrocious things in that war. And whenever we carried out the events, we would go to the uh, national cemeteries and who died? It was young youth who died. And this is the wars of the world. Should that be the case? As people who have logic, we have to uh, achieve peace and leave it as a legacy for the future generations. That's why I've been doing the work of peace, the work of peace to the, throughout the whole world as I went around the world. So in Korea, in the place referred to as uh, Hoseon, we established a peace institute. We wanted to in, invite people and teach them, and they can go back to their churches and back to their nations and teach the word. And we established like a training institute. We made it, but many people, we haven't been able to invite people. What is it that we must do? Even if we spend money, we have to spend money on what's valuable. And what is valuable, you, I'm sure you know. So this is the kind of preparation we've been making for the whole people of the whole world for the work of peace. I've been doing it. 
I wish people would understand that point. Thank you very much, Chairman, for your answer. Next. First of all, congratulations, Pastor Lee and the 12 tribe leaders on the successfully completed Revelation Word Seminar. There has been many debates on the explanation of parables, which also was a controversy globally. For example, the 666 and the prostitutes. In your opinion, what is the biggest reason on wrong interpretation of the Bible? Yes, I would like to speak two words. I see that, that, that it's not within man. Whether it be Jesus or God, why did they speak in parables? Even if you heard it, you wouldn't understand it. And why did he speak about the things of the, since the beginning of the world in parables? You can think about that. When you look at the Bible, and I'm sure you understand the things of the past, the things of history, God, after he created all creation, he created man as well. That person listened to the words of the serpent and what God said, don't eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He ate it and that's why death entered. That's what it says. If they hadn't eaten it, there wouldn't have been difficulties. But in the spiritual world, there was one entity that betrayed God and that spirit of betrayal, that serpent, deceived Eve, uh, deceived Adam. And as a result, death entered and God left the person that sinned. And in order to restore this world, many prophets and apostles were sent. However, what happened to all of them? Even if God's son was sent, they killed him. He sent the prophets and apostles, they said they killed them too. Who killed them? Was it the unbelievers? No. You know very well. This world actually became enemies with God. So, if the enemy, in order for the enemy to not know, he hid. And the content of revelation that the 12 tribal leaders testified about. God recorded the book, and even if other thing, people recorded other things, this book of revelation is actually recorded by God. And so that no one could see it, he sealed it with seven seals, and God had it. Up until now, for 2,000 years, he had it. But that content was also recorded in parables in figurative language. So, this kind of content, this kind of word, you have to know it. And this is definitely something that people must know. People didn't know, so they, can, they might have complaints, they might be curious, and they might want to know what it means. But from God's point of view, we have to think about it from His point of view. If it's not ready, if there's no preparations made, He can't just give it out. It can't just be given to just anybody, anytime. A person is like the house of a spirit. You don't know what kind of spirit dwells in you, but, and a person is like a field, Depending on the seed that's sown in that field, that tree will grow. And a person's like a house. Depending on what kind of spirit lives in that house, things change. So God, he didn't make it known to the people, so people didn't know. And if people didn't know, it's because God didn't make it known. It's not that we don't want to know. When the time comes, until the appointed time, that's what Jesus said. Until the appointed time, it's in figurative language, but when the time comes, I will make it known to you plainly. That time, when is that? The time is 
when the words of the prophecy are fulfilled. What is fulfilled? The actual entities of the prophecies appear, and that's when you're able to see it and come to know it, because the actual entities appear. Isn't that right? Until that time, it has to be sealed and it can't be made known. But when it's fulfilled, actual entities appear and the Bible could be explained. If you look at Revelation chapter 17, if you look at the content of chapter 17, there, Jesus, because he fulfilled all the things, he saw the actual entities that appeared. And these things, they themselves don't know either. On that prosecutor's forehead, it's written Babylon, but no one knows. Spiritually, you can see that it's Babylon, but when you see it, like, it's just a, like, a, like a normal pastor and a normal church member. And the food that they were eating was actually the wine of adultery. It was like the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It wasn't the fruit of the tree of life. It wasn't the water of life that they were drinking. All these things, when it's actually happening, because it wasn't made known, we, could, we didn't know. But that's because it wasn't the time yet. And also because there's an enemy. You can't just make it known so that anyone could know right away. However, when the time comes for revelation to be fulfilled, at that time, the actual entities of the word appears, so no need to lie about it. You just talk about it plainly. But regarding this book of Revelation, it's so valuable, and it's definitely something that you and I need to know, and it's definitely something that we can't add to or subtract from. Even if you say bad things to me, I'm going to say this. In this world, you have believers and you have unbelievers, people who aren't believers. But there's not one person, do you think that they have the qualification to enter into heaven? It's a misunderstanding. When Revelation is fulfilled, 66 books of the Bible, the book of Revelation is the book of mystery. When this book of Revelation is fulfilled, the one that saw and heard, and the one who's able to touch and know the fulfillment of the prophecies and beliefs, they're the ones who are able to be saved. So, this book, one book, you can't explain it and resolve it. Even if you carried out your life of faith, well, that would be a lie. The words of Revelation, if it hasn't been fulfilled, would you, what would you know? And what could you say you believed well? Isn't that right? Revelation is actually what is promised. And the work of recreation is promised. It also talks about the subjects of the kingdom coming to an end. It also talks about first heaven and first earth passing away. It has to talk about new heaven and new earth being created. But people too, it's not just people of current state, but people who are newly created. They are all created by God's word. That's what it said, right? This kind of tremendous, a new kingdom, a new people, a new heaven, a new earth being created. This is inside the book of Revelation. This kind of content, the 12 tribe leaders and 12 tribes already spoke it. If I myself, if I'm not the original, if I'm not created in the original state that God wanted me to be, I have to be born again, right? Why does the scripture say, be born again, be born again? In this Bible, there are those born of God's seed, and there are those born of the devil's seed. They, they don't, they themse themselves don't know either. So those who are born of God's seed are harvested and through the word of the new covenant, they are sealed and they become and they are created to be God's kingdom and priests and God's people. That's promised in Revelation. So 
The word of testimony of the 12 tribes, listen to it again and again. This kind of content is inside that testimony, up to here. Well, thank you once again, Chairman, for your answer. Good morning, and my question is, many Christians believe that the Bible book of Revelation talks about the end of the world, which seems very dark and gloomy. Most people are scared to read it because it talks of wars, famine, dragons, and the end of humankind, and it doesn't make much sense. But it seems like New Heaven, New Earth Church has a very different and positive view on this often scary image. What's your view and what would you say to people regarding the end times as prophesied? in the revelation thank you i'll give you the answer can you believe it that's the question that i want to ask if revelation is fulfilled would you be able to see it and believe it inside this book of revelation from the beginning until the very end it's actually war between who is that war fought? Between God and Satan. And also, you have God's group and Satan's group fighting. It's hard to understand as, as human. However, from the fall of, since the time of Adam's fall, every time God sends a person, do they welcome him and do they you know, receive him? No, they're all killed. Even God's son is killed. Do you not know that? God's son, who's greater than God's son? Everyone, you have to think about it really seriously, sincerely. This book of Revelation being fulfilled, it's actually the work of recreation. In doing this work of recreation, the enemy, God's enemy, do you think that he'll just sit and watch that's why there's war. So if you look at Revelation 2 and 3, that's why Jesus says to overcome seven times. If, if you overcome, you're able to have the whole world, and if you lose, you lose the whole world, and it's taken away from you. 6,000 years, the devil, the world that God has created, he's been ruling over it. He's been ruling over it. God left, and he's not here. And the devil, who was ruling over the world? The devil was ruling over the world. However, people couldn't sense that. And they lived their lives without sensing that. But when revelation is fulfilled, all the facts are made known and you have to fight against Satan and win. All the facts have to be revealed and all the actual entities have to appear. The people that appear in Revelation, those actual entities have to appear. God's side and Satan's side also has to appear, and there's war, that war. In Revelation chapter 16, those who overcame in Revelation chapter 12, they become the bowls of wrath of Revelation 15, and in Revelation 16, those bowls are poured out onto Babylon, the betrayers and destroyers, and judgment is carried out. And it says all nations are gathered to this place. If all the demons and all nations are gathered, it's such a, can you imagine how big the war is? And surely the scale is really, really big. So even the life of faith, you actually have to be really brave. You say faith, faith, but... At an event like this, at this kind of location, we have to keep our faith. The covenant that we made with God, even if we uh, risk our lives, we have to keep. That's why the scripture says, you know, if you uh, want to live, you'll die. And if you die, then you'll live. I think that when I went to Africa and saw the people's lives of faith, I thought that their faith was great. When I was actually uh, detained, I wrote like a video letter and to the president, I said, the people from the broadcasting companies, they cried. And I felt like that, I felt love. And I thought that 
the people of Africa had the greatest faith in terms of the world. However, but it's not. Everything that you know right now is not everything. In the book of Revelation, you have to go into the words of Revelation. You have to go inside the word and you have to think about God's situation and circumstance. You have to understand all things. What is God's objective? We need to know that. And if we if we're going to do that, then I, who am I according to this book of Revelation? Don't we need to know that? Revelation talks about two different entities. Then who am I according to the book of Revelation? And secondly, have I truly been that as if it was I'm sealed? Have I been created with the words of Revelation? At the time of Revelation, people are recreated and heaven and earth is recreated. Then I, according to the words of Revelation, have I been created? Have I been born of God's seed? If I'm not born of God's seed, have I, am I born of the Satan's seed? If I'm born of God's seed, I have to be harvested. At the time of the harvest, it says it's the time of the end of the age. In Matthew 13, it says that. There are the two kinds of seed are sown, right? The two kinds of seed are sown. And at that place, at the time of the harvest, those who are born of God's seed are taken, right? And those who are not born of God's seed, they remain in the field. At the time of the harvest, if you're not harvested, can I really say I'm born of God's seed? Let's think about it. The Bible is like a scale. The Bible is like a scale. You know, which way is going to go up or down? But my faith and my knowledge, when you weigh it on that scale, anyone could say, I believe the great tribulation and the wars at a time like that. That's when you can see a person's true faith. Peter bore the cross upside down, and Paul, he was beheaded on top of a stone. And still, these people kept their faith. Today, too, when revelation is fulfilled, do you think that heaven will be achieved just easily? Just as it is fulfilled in heaven, it has to be fulfilled here on earth. That's where the kingdom of heaven comes down and unites with it here on earth. Everyone, we say, you want to go to heaven, and is it just a simple matter of just going to heaven? The path to go to heaven, what kind of path is it? It's the path of Jesus' cross. In John 14, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That's what he said. What kind of path did Jesus walk on? Therefore, we truly we have to be sincere about our faith. We have to be sincere towards God. We have to be sincere towards the word. It's not just about knowing a little. If I don't know the Bible well, even if it's a fact, it's because God didn't make it known. However, but now, God established the 12 tribes, and through these people, does he, do they preach with the Bible in their hands? They're sealed. They're born of God's seed. That's why, up to chapter 22, with new things, they were able to testify, right? You too, now, as a person in position of being born again, let us become children of God. And because we've suffered a lot, now what we hope for, the kingdom of heaven, don't you think that we need to receive eternal life? I hope that it would really be the case. In order to know the Bible, put everything aside, and first, Put an effort in knowing the word. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman Lee, for giving clear answers to all the questions. And all the press associates, thank you for the questions. This press conference was a combined conference of 55 <laughs> nations of Africa. I believe it was a valuable time with the questions from the press associates that the believers today could reflect more about. Lastly, we will welcome Chairman Lee to give a message to all the press associates in the world through the press conference.
네, 기자 여러분들. 고맙습니다. To all the reporters, thank you very much. Sincerely, I give you thanks. When I think about the past, the people of Africa, truly, compared to other nations, your faith is great. I sincerely think so. And that's why, truly, in my thoughts and in my heart, deeply, I thought about you. So the 55 nations of Africa and the parliamentary members in, and in uh, South Africa, they have a, a meeting hall and all the leaders as well. We gathered in Ethiopia. And at that time, they had a meeting And I spoke there as well at the Pan-African Parliament. And I met people there. And I'm so gra grateful to be able to meet you right now. I'm sure heaven is seeing this right now. So all of us together, according to the will of God, let's act accordingly. And what we hope for, I hope that all of us will be able to achieve that hope. It's not you and I are separated. But within God, we are one. Within God, we have to make an effort to be one and be one. This is actually something that Jesus asked us to do. That's right. So, John, in 17, as well as in chapter 15, Jesus uh, told us to be one. Within God, within the true word, Word of truth, let us be one. That's what we should do. If I don't know something, I have to ask somebody who knows. If I'm going on the wrong path, somebody has to uh, tell me to go the right, correct path. It's not just about walking on that path. Even in the Old Testament, God promised a promised pastor, Jesus. Who will he born, be born of? Where will he be born? It's all recorded. However, the Jewish people at that time didn't believe. It's not be that way. Today, too, Jesus in Ezekiel 3 received the scroll and he proclaimed it, right? Then also, the people that he proclaimed to were referred to as a rebellious house, right? That's what it says in the scriptures. Jesus received it and to the rebellious house, to the Jewish people, and he proclaimed it. And who are the Jews? If you look at 1 Kings chapter 11, you can see it. Solomon, when he betrayed, when Solomon betrayed, the 11 tribes become a Gentile nation and one that's left were the, the Jewish people, right? And they, at the time of the first coming, they're the ones that Jesus proclaimed the gospel to. We saw that in John chapter 8. The ones that fought most with Jesus, who were they? It was the pastors of Judaism. Is it, wasn't it the pastors of Judaism that killed Jesus at that time? You know that very well. Just like that, even in the New Testament, it talks about Jesus' return. When Jesus returns, will he come back in the spirit or in the flesh? He comes in the form of a spirit. In Revelation chapter 1, in verse 17, from verse 16 and on, it talks about Jesus coming in the form of a spirit. He comes in the form of a spirit, and what does he do? Everything's recorded, right? He appoints the seven messengers. He puts the seven stars in his right hand, and he walks among the seven golden lampstands, and he's in the form of a spirit at that time. However, this Jesus chooses one person. He chooses one person, and he makes that person write letters on behalf of him in Revelation 2 and 3. And through that person, Jesus... The book that he received from God, when he fulfills that, there is somebody next to him who saw that chapter by chapter. The person who saw it is sent to the churches to testify. Isn't that right? In the past, it was Jesus. God fulfilled it. Jesus saw it, and he testified. In John 5, verse 17 to 19, if you look at that content, what God fulfilled, Jesus saw it, and Jesus did accordingly. That's what it says, right? This New Testament as well, when he fulfilled it, there's somebody who saw it. That's what it says in Revelation 22, verse 8. That's why what's recorded in the New Testament 
there's one pastor and you have to know him because all the mysteries are made known to him and it's shown to him, everything is shown to him. So he will testify about what he saw and heard. And the faith is something that we must have. And we can't even go to heaven with what we have right now. We have to resurrect, just like Jesus. We have to resurrect. If I want to resurrect, I have to have God's seed. But the word of God has to be in me. And we have to have the condition to be able to resurrect. And who, in whose image? According to the image of the word. According to the uh, source of this word, which is God. That's how we need to resurrect. That's all of us that we have to do it. There might be different types of chickens, but if you receive a seed of a certain chicken, it's going to be born that type of chicken, right? Just like that, that logic. Us too, we have to we have the absolute value of seed of God's word, and we have to receive God's food. And when we are resurrected, when we have a resurrected body, then we are born as new beings, new entities. That's why God says, be born again. And it is only through God's seed, the word. This word has to come into us and it creates us into image in his likeness in our hearts. And that resurrection, even our outer body, it has to be renewed in a new body. These are not my words, right? These are actually the words of Jesus's promise. It's Jesus's words of promise. Because you're good believers, more than anybody in the world, I'm sure, I hope that everyone resurrects and has the image and likeness of God and become the people of the kingdom of heaven. I believe that you can do that. When I went to Africa, I saw that. There's nothing that I great is great of my own. All the 55 parliament members, they shook hands with me and signed MOU. My hand is not like an empty, uh, free hand, right? I'm sure there's words that you want to say. Let us all humble ourselves and let us be obedient again and again to God's word. And because we live in this world with injustice and suffering, let us understand that the world that is to come is the world of recreation and that we live together with God. If we don't have that kind of hope, I will not be able to carry out this work. If there's no being born again or no resurrection, there's no hope. So, every time I see you, I smile and laugh, and I think about the current state as well as the future. I, I'm also a very difficult person. I have to touch things. Just like, you know, people touch the side of Jesus and Jesus' hand, I have, like, I have to make sure. I saw the things of the future, the world to come. I've met God. I know all these things. However, Jesus was in the form of human being and came to this earth like a sinner. And we live here on this world, but we all have a hope. And if I want to enter, what kind of people do we need to become? You know very well. So, and in the end, I'd like to make a request. Everyone, if there's something you want to know, write letters. I'll write answers and send it to you. In order for you to make uh, everything known, we are doing the introductory level. We already did Revelation. And now we're going to chapter by chapter, and the head instructors of the churches, they're going to be uh, teaching. And the reporters, what you promised at the Peace Summit, you also have to report, right? Everything that we did, we make sure you report it. And at the Peace Summit, before God and before the whole world, we made a promise, right? Within, the, within one God, we become one. That's what we promised. 
before all the people of the world, before God. The politicians, they said that they would enact an international law and before the people and before God. And all the reporters, this work, continuously, they would report it. That's what they said. You know, with why would we say two things with one mouth, right? We have to keep what we promised. Whether it be then or now, I have not changed. Therefore, let us become people of God and in the world of paradise, the kingdom of heaven, let's live together with God. The smart spirits of the martyrs are waiting. I'm sure you know. So shall we bring this to an end? After you listen to the word, record it, and listen to it again, and then watch it again, and you have questions, write letters, and listen to it again. And let us become one, okay? In order to become one, let's do, we are one together. Let's do it together. We'll finish it. We are one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman, for the precious words. We will now end the press conference. And we would like to thank all of you for making time to attend. After the press conference, we will send contents for the press release along with transcription of the answer, even photos and video clips. We ask for an active promotion of the event as these press kits can be shared in media platform and social network page. If there is any inquiry, please contact us through email or phone number. We would like to thank everyone once more for participating and end the press conference. Please have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.